Hi lovely creative people, this is June from Oakland Witch Lane Designs. I wanted to do a needle felting video, but I wanted to make it a beginner's video because there's a lot of people that don't know how to needle felt. So I decided that I would show everyone how to do a needle felted gnome witch. It's a very easy project for beginners and with some bits of fabric and hair you can create your own gnome witch. Now, I will be mentioning some websites and web stores on my video, and I just wanted you to all to know that I have gotten permission from the owners to do so. So, grab your brew. Oh, and you see my friend over there. He's watching too. Yeah, he's watching me too. I hope I do it correct. Grab your brew, and let's get cackling. Corny jokes. Okay, everybody, let's get started. When you're needle felting, you're going to need basically three things. You're going to need a surface to needle felt on, you're going to need felting needles, and you're going to need some wool. I'm gonna go over all three of these things so you can have a pretty an idea of what you should be buying if you are new to needle felting. I buy the majority of my supplies from an online store called Sarafina Fiber Art. And this is her Stab It Web It. That's what she calls it. It's eight by 10. And it's basically a pieces of burlap that were sewn like a pillowcase almost. And there is a hole over here that you take and go and buy about three pounds of rice. And with a funnel, you try to get the rice in there. It's basically a two person job would be much easier, but I've done it by myself. And you pour the rice in here until it gets nice and firm. Now other people, I've seen other people felt on foam. Uh, I've never used it. I cannot say anything. I can't say pros or cons against it, but I love working on this. This is my second one. The first one lasted, oh, I don't know, about two or three years because you can also just put patches on it if some of the area gets uh, very worn. Now, on when I use my Stab It Web It, I try to leave the top side for a lighter color wool and... I'll turn it over and you can see that I've been doing a lot of uh, witches, needle felting witches on this side because it has got the darker wool here. Okay, the next thing I want to talk to you about is needles, felting needles. And if you're new to needle felting, it can get very, very confusing. Okay, basically there are three sizes that you should be concerned about, a 36, a 38, and a 40. The 36 is the I guess a thicker needle, it's a workhorse. That's when you're first starting trying to get the fibers together uh, and it, it felts faster. The 38 is the one that I basically use all of the time. That's for general needle felting. And the 40 is the thinnest needle and that's for finishing touches, fine touches. And we'll be using all three of those needles th today. The other thing about the needles is they come with all of a sudden you're going to be inundated with all of these terms. It's a triangle, a star, and a twist or a spiral. Now, triangle needles are exactly that. They have three sides and they have barbs along the needle. Okay, I don't use triangles that much. I prefer stars, which are four sides and have more barbs. I'm going to see if I can get um, a closer viewing of this so you can see what I mean by the bobs. Trying to focus my camera. Come on, bub. No, nope, you don't want to focus now. You can see that there are some little indents, and that's what helps you felt the wool together. And now we just have to fix this. So we're back to there we go. Okay, good. Um, so the stars are four-sided and they have more barbs on the needle and it just I just think they're a better needle. I'm not saying anything against triangles. I do prefer stars. The last one is a spiral or a twist and what they do is they take the needle 
and they just, it's a twisted needle. I'm not sure, again, I don't know, oops, wrong side. I'm not sure if, um, how many barbs or if it was a triangle or a star that they twist, but they twist the needle. And I also like the twists or spirals. Okay, the felting surface and the needles can all be purchased at Serafina. I would recommend highly if you're a beginner to go there and buy products from her because they are very good quality products. I haven't bought from a, a lot. I haven't bought a lot from um, other shops, so I'm not saying anything against them. But these are the products I use, and I know that they are good. Now we're going to talk about the wool. This is what is called core wool, and it's a little on Sarah Fina's shop. It's a little bit fuzzier. Oh, and by the way, just in case anybody would like to know this, I did contact Sarah and I did ask her if I can show and use her items that I purchased from her on this video and she approved it. So I'm not, everything is good. Okay. So this is her core wool and it's very fuzzy and it felts up very fast. It's it, when you start doing it, I guess because of the fibers, I'm not a wool expert. I am far from a wool expert. I just want to know what works. Uh, this felt very, very quickly. This is called a top coat. And the yarn here is got a longer yarn length and it's smoother. You can tell it's smoother than this. It's less fuzzy. There you go. You can see that. And this is what you put on top of this. This is the core wool. You get more. I think it's a little bit less expensive. You get more, more to do. And you don't want to use top wool when you first start out to try to make the inner core because it's you'll be needle felting for a long time. And it's better just to leave this on the top. Okay. Some other tools, once you get into needle felting that you might like to buy, these are called Clover. This is the pen needle felting tool. And this can take up to three, three needles. Hold on, I'll get something so maybe you can see that. Oh, you can see it pretty good. I only have two, and I'll explain why in a second. Um, I only put two needles in here because a lot of times I'm needle felting on wire armatures and it's easier to felt around the wire because you don't want to hit the needle on the wire because you can break the needle. Um, so I only put two in here. You could put three or you could put one if you have um, a hard time just holding a needle like this. This makes it easier to grasp the needles. They also have other things online like wooden handles and stuff. You make the choice of what you'd like to do. It's very easy to get your needles in there. Oh, you could also, if you want, just to have the needles out so you see it there. You put the cover on because at this point, these this is the only part that's really felting. Um, but to put the needles in, you just open the back and hope I don't, and you just put your needles in the grooves, how many you want to put in. Now the reason why I have two of these is because these are my 38s, which is my mid-sized needle that I use a lot, but I also have one for my 36, which is the thicker needle, and it makes, uh, when you first start and you're just trying to get the project together, the 36s make it much easier. I put blue painter's tape on it so I can see at a glance which needle tool I'm picking up very quickly. So I don't have to look at the needles themselves and try to figure out what's what. The other thing that you might be interested in purchasing, and this is called a Clover Needle Felting Punch Tool. Uh, this locks, you just unlock it. Oh, we unlock it, okay. This plastic, this clear plastic comes down and I usually put my finer needles in this. You can put up to five in here and there's reasons to use this and we'll go, I'll explain it later on. So basically that's all the tools you will need besides a wooden skewer to complete this switch and, and the needle felting part of it. 
Um, I'm not even going to tell you what colors to use. I happen to be using black, but if you look on her website, you're going to see some beautiful other color uh, wools. There's purples, there's greens, there's all sorts of colors, but the only thing that I would suggest is you get the core wool and a top, a top coat wool or a top. I would stay away from any of the merinos right now. They're a little bit more difficult to felt, but it's totally up to you. Okay, so let's start. Enough of me yakking and let's start doing. All right, let's move everything out of the way. The first thing you're going to do is, I, the, the Stab It Wabbit is about 10 inches. Just maybe double it and pull off. See how easy that just pulls apart. Okay? Now, if you don't have a wooden skewer, you could use a dowel. Sarah also sells a beautiful thing called the Zuli tool. It's made with beautiful wool. This is a gorgeous tool to have. You could use this. If you don't have it and you have a wooden skewer, please use, please use this. Okay. You're going to be, what we're going to try to do is to wrap the wool around the skewer to get a shape. First thing is, you, I'm putting the wool over the skewer. I'm holding it firmly with my left hand thumb and I'm just going around and slightly pulling it as I go. Pulling, pulling, pulling. You could also, I'll just keep wrapping. I'm not going to start twirling the, the skewer. That's going to get confusing. And after you've wrapped it a couple of times, the first, the first piece is going to stay there. So you're just straightening out your wool. Now you see, if you can see, this wool is getting a little bit pulled apart. So it's sort of getting the point where I might not be able to pull and wrap. But let's see. If so, we'll just start pulling and wrapping again. Straighten out your fiber with your left hand. You're holding the wool down as you go. Now that was very thin piece, like I said, so now I'm getting back to some thicker wool. Going back over that. If you have fuzz as you go along, no problem. Oops, took off a piece of wool. That's okay, too. Just wrap it. That's why you're using this fuzzy wool. It's not going to be your top coat wool unless you decide to do that. I'm going to wrap back because I'm seeing a spot that was a little hollow. And I'm going to go all the way back. And I still have some more wool, so then I'll just go back this way. Very easy to do this. Now, take, I'm going to use my 36 needle. Okay. And I'm just stabbing it. I'm just, I'm not going towards the skewer because that's going to break my needle. There's enough on the side between the skewer and the outside. I'm just stabbing it in. Going around, just getting all of that fuzz nice and in. Again, this is the base that we're doing right now. And there will be a lot of poking. Now I'm, the way to poke or to stab or however you want to call it, is let the needle do the work. Originally when I first started, I was stabbing like a crazy person. But right now, just let the needle do it. The need, that's the needle's job. You don't want to go so light that you can't get the needle in the wall. But you don't want to be stabbing it like you're trying to attack it. Okay, so I'm just felting it a little bit on the skewer because I want to make sure that I can still take it off, but I do want it a little bit firm because I am going to put another layer of the core wool on this. Okay, and I'm just squeezing it that, let me, that way. Let me get, again, one, two, rip it off. I hope I... Did that on screen that might have been off screen but you got the picture of it again i'm starting over 
holding my hand now, wrapping over where I started, keep going, keep wrapping, I can move my hand now, pull it a little bit, don't pull it so much that you're ripping it again, that's, that's something that you have to find as you go along, and I still occasionally rip it, pull, and you're pulling it tight, but again, not tight enough to rip the felt or the wool apart. Here we go again. We're at the end. I'm felting on the sides just to get it so it sticks together. Now here you can tell that there's a little bit of a ridge in there, but that's fine. Don't this is a no fuss, no muss. We're going to take care of that. I'm just trying to get the beginning shape. The end result, just so you could see, is we are trying to get a very long carrot. But as we go, I'll explain how we do it. So right now, all you're doing is just trying to get it so all the fibers stay together. And with your 36 needle, am I using my 30? No, I'm using my 38. Okay, well, your 38 works really quick, too. Let me get the 36. Now you'll know when you have to go from one needle, one size, this is the heaviest needle, you'll know when you have to go over to your 38s because you won't be able, it's going to be harder to push your needle into the felt, the felting wool that you're doing. Okay. Now, because I don't want to be spending a really long time trying to get this long carrot, I am going to take another, I would say the same length, twice, twice over, rip it, pull it apart, and again, start at the bottom, you're going over the top. Now, if you want to start here, and it's easier for you to go over like this, fine, no problem. It's whichever way you want to wrap. Now what I am trying to do on this one is straighten out my wool. I'm trying to get it thicker on the bottom because you need to get a very, uh, the bottom of the carrot has to be thicker or more filted than the top. I went forward, I'm coming back a little bit. And again, let me take the right, this is the 36. This is the 36 star. And I'm needle felting the end in. I'm just trying to go on the sides. Now you know you'll notice that this is not going all the way to the tip like this other carrot that I have right here, and I'll show you how to do that. But let's first try to get the base done so that we can move forward and get this off the skewer because I do not have anything in the center of this. This is not wire armatured, or nor do I use the wooden skewer on it. To give it support, this is all supported by needle felting and the wool by itself. Okay, so yours should look like this, and as you can tell, it's starting to look like a stubby carrot. It's not really in any great, great shape right now, but this is fine to start off with. Then all we're going to do is pull the skewer out, and that's when we're going to start with really intently needle felting. Now the first thing that you real that that has to happen is you get a solid base. And how I do that is just by needle felting the bottom. I'm going in to get all those fibers there. Keep poking and poking. I could use my clover tool. That's two needles in one. 
so the felting goes a little bit faster. And I'm starting to make my base is getting thicker. When you squeeze it, you'll notice that it's resisting being squeezed and it feels more solid. And that's how you want the base. You want it very well felted. Okay. Now I'm just shaping. Let's go this way. I'm just shaping it because some of it looked a little bit out of, it didn't look smooth to me. So I'm just shaping it and trying to get it looking like a smooth carrot. Now right here feels very thin as compared to here. So what I would do in that instance, because I still wanted to be able to felt and be a little thicker there, as I just pulled off, I don't know, maybe four inches. Let me see. I have a measuring thing here. About four to five inches. I'm going to take it, put it down, and I'm going to pull it, wrap it, and wrap it again over, and then hold that down, come in with my felting tool, watching where my fingers are because honestly getting stabbed with felting needles is not fun. And there. If I need to do it again, I will. But basically, again, this is all we're doing. We're just poking. You're going around. You're rotating your carrot and just going around to get the whole thing pretty firmly felted and I am concentrating my efforts to the bottom part of the carrot. This is something different. This is going to be the top of her hat. I started needle felting because I wanted to have a way to give a more realistic look to mice my mice that I make. And I always used to make my mice out of polymer clay. And I would go on my shop in Etsy and of course you see what other people are doing. And I started seeing all of these very beautiful creatures, whether they be mice or other things, on Etsy. So I started researching it and that's how I found uh, Serafina's shop. I don't know if she still has a shop on Etsy but she does have her own store online. And like I said before, her products are wonderful, especially for beginner felters. The other thing that she has, which you might want to look up, is on uh, the top, there's a list called Tutorials. And if you click the link, she breaks down all of her YouTube videos by how easy they are to more advanced. It's it's really a, a great shop for beginner needle filters and experienced ones alike. She also does uh, 2D felting, which is like the pictures or uh, cloaks. Wonderful, wonderful YouTube videos. I cannot recommend her or her products enough and her YouTube videos, but I will put the link below. So I'm just basically going around felting and felting. And if you wanted to make this a little thick, thicker, like Edna, you just take more of your core wool, pull it, and wrap. I'm going to leave it this size, but you just take it. I'll show it to you, but I won't felt it in. You just take it, and wherever you want, you just wrap it and it gets thicker and thicker, and then you just felt it in, okay? So now let me show you how I do the tip to get that nice long tip. I needle felt the tip over here into my felting surface. So there is a little bit of a, I can't get it out that easily. Then what I start to do is I twist it. And as I'm twisting, 
I'm felting it down. Okay, this one might not work as easy, but we'll put it over here. Let's get it down in there. I see that I'm having a little bit of a gap here, so let me firm it up a little bit. Okay, and again, I get it in there, and I twist. And the more that it would stay stationary, if it would ever do that for me, because of course on a video, it's not going to do that. As I twist and pull, this gets longer and thinner as we go. Okay, let's get serious here. Nothing like having a technique that you've used quite a few times and then when you're videotaping it, it just doesn't want to work. Okay, here we go. It's in there now. And I'm twisting and pulling. And it starts to taper off. So that you're getting that long, thin point. Another way to help it is to take it between your hands and just rub them together and your tip will get nice and long, hopefully. Here, okay. Now, this part of your carrot does not have to be as firmly needle felted as this part because this is the part you want the witch to stand. I'm just going to test it over here. See, it's to see if it would stand. It almost does. It almost does here. But it still needs some more felting on the bottom. So that's what we'll do. Oh, so I was telling you about my polymer clay mice. So I saw the mouse videos, and she also has kits that you can buy that has everything in it as far as the wool and the wire armatures are concerned and all the different colors that you want to use to create your creatures. And you can buy the kit, and that's how I started. I bought a mouse kit, and I made my first mouse, and I was hooked. I absolutely loved it and I watched her video. She also has videos that show you what to do and how to use all the supplies in the kits that she gives. The realistic effect with needle felted mice was what I really loved because I like making or creating objects that may be fantasy but they really look real. I've, uh, I love Tony Didolizzi's illustrations in the Spiderwick Chronicles. He did all sorts of fey folk in there and uh, they almost look like they could be real. I like that line between fantasy and reality where you're not really sure. And as far as mice works concerned, I've always loved mice. I loved mice that were dressed up. I have still some books, a Halloween book that I read the kids every year, although the kids aren't kids anymore, but they suffer through. We used to, when they were younger, as they were young, I used to go under the covers with a flashlight and we'd read all our cute little Halloween stories. I love Halloween. I don't like the gore um, that comes with Halloween. It should be just the last of the harvest festivals, and it should be a celebration. But some people like gore, so whatever is good for them, whatever they enjoy doing. I prefer a little spooky, but basically to honor ancestors because they say that is when the veil is the thinnest and to have a nice time. Okay, as I was talking to you, basically all I was doing was poking with a needle. I was using my 36 
I can start using my 38 and you'll, and you'll feel it as you're doing it that there you can get it's easier because the 38 is a little thinner. And let's see if I can make this any. The reason why I think is because this has more felt right in here, more wool right in here than here, and that's why it's not twisting as well for me. But basically, when for you, I'm sure it'll work better for you since you're not taking a video of it. You try to get the tip on your felting surface so that it's not pulling off. And then you're just twisting and pulling, twisting and pulling. And that'll bring this yarn out to a nice tip. Again, right here. It's feeling a little bit flimsy to me as compared to here. This is a little thicker. So what I might do at this stage is just to show you, I'm just going to pull off, let's see, a little amount of wool and just wrap it here. These are very, it's not even going to be a wrap because I can't get both sides. So I'll just do this, hold it down and felt it in. Watch my fingers because I really don't want to stab myself. And you're going to break needles. And unfortunately, there may be a time when you stab yourself. But, and that hurts, I'll be honest. But the rest, the fun far outshines any once a stab. And also, let me show you, oh, I forgot to show you these. I also purchased because sometimes I'm like, I'm not felting against the pad. I'm holding it up in, in my hands. I've purchased these little leather protectors for your fingers. And I had it, and you can just hold them. And if you're worried and you're going to stab yourself, if you stab yourself with one of these, it doesn't go through. So if you're concerned about stabbing yourself, get these. I don't remember where I purchased them. I'm sorry, but I'm sure you can go online and someplace would have them. They're just leather fingers for needle felting. When I first started using them, I was like, I don't know if you ever put a dog in boots and they didn't know what to do. So I would I would have these on my fingers and I'd hold the, the felt with this. So I would because I couldn't get used to it. So I'd still I'd still be stabbing myself. So it took a learning curve even for the little leather fingers. But I'm gonna take these off now because I don't need them. Okay, so now check the time. Within about 30 minutes, you have a long carrot. Okay, now I can go with this. This is again using my coral wool, but I like putting a finishing touch to it by using the top, the black top. So what I'm going to do is black on black, you're not going to see what I'm, what I'm trying to accomplish. So I'm going to put this one over to the side. I made a brown one earlier, so hopefully you can see this a little better. And I am going to start putting my top coat on my felted base. Okay, this is, as you can see, thinner, and the fibers all basically go in the same direction. I'm going to take a piece off, and this is a little, no, sorry, maybe, not. yeah, take a piece off. There we go. Okay, let me get myself organized. And I'm just going to lay it on top. There's another way to pull off on this, and I will do that later to show you my next piece that I take off. And then what I do is on this, you have to use your 38 or your 40. And I can't find, there's my 40. Okay. And this is how... I put my wool on my mice. I like the wool going in the direction of how the fur would be. There's 
a lot of there's a couple of different ways on how to attach long fibers to your felting base. This happens to be my way of doing it simply because I like the fur, like I said, to go the same way I would think the fur on the mice would be. So all I did was took a piece off and I'm using my four, I'm still using my 38. Okay, in that case, I will take my uh, cl the clover needle felting, the felting pen, and just start going up and down and getting that fiber felted in to my brown carrot. Now, the reason why I'm doing it on the brown, like I said before, is because there would be no way that you could see what I was doing if it was black on black. And I do want to show you the difference. And again, this is just my way of felting this on. Okay, have this. Because I took off a clump, I should have just pulled it off another way, which I'm going to show you right now. But you just keep felting it down until it's staying on the base. Now, when you're using the top coat, it's easier if you just take the end and pull it out like that. See how easy that is? And you'll see that I think this is what they refer to as the staple length of how long the fibers are. Okay, and I take that and I lay it down. Just a couple of wisps. Trying to even it out. And again, start stabbing. You could use this has five needles. This is your punch tool. You could start using that to just get the fibers down. So you can see there's a little bit of the brown showing, not a problem. Pull out some more of my fiber. I grab the ends and I pull. I'll just put some more on here. It's very relaxing to do this, especially if you're not on a video. Sorry, that's my phone in the background. told everybody who usually calls me that I'm taping, but you can help those robocalls and it's going to ring for a while because I took off the re I took off my um, receiver so I wasn't getting any messages on my message machine. machine. Sorry about that. Hopefully you can't hear it. Sooner or later the robocall will stop. But okay, keep going. So all I'm trying to do is get the fibers in. Again, pull out, pull some out, and put it down. Wow, they're still ringing. I'm just going to put on pause so I can get rid of the ringing on the background. I'll be right back. Sorry about that. I hope I'm not the only one that gets plagued by those robocalls. I'll put my answering machine back on because at least that way it'll stop them 
from ringing in that long. Okay, so I'm just taking some of the top again, getting little pieces. Very easy to do that, and then lining it up on my piece and needle felting it in. There's all sorts of different types of wools. I have tried a few of them. I also have some merino, but I try to stay away from it simply because it's very long and silky and it's hard. It's not really what I need for my projects. I could use the merino to make um, hair for my dolls. And when I show you how some different ways to make hair for your little witches, your little gnome witches, we'll go over some uses of that. I could also use some top or to make hair. Okay. So now I'm seeing that I have a little bit over here and again I wasn't, you know, a little bit of the brown showing. So just take a piece, put it down. Take another piece, put it down. And just needle felt that in. Now, if you were only using one needle, that would take a little bit more time, but that's okay too. Now, I don't know if you can see this. Oh, yes, you can. You can see that there's a definite direction of how the wool is going, and my little mice critters, I like that look. Although I dress them so most of the people can't see that that's how I did their bodies, but that's how I put their tummy fur on and their back fur and their leg and paw fur on. This is how I do it. And since they are stationary pieces, they're not meant to move. If your pieces are meant to be posed or moved, you might want to find um, a different technique. Again, if you look at Sarah's videos, she will show you her technique. I just like doing it like this. Now for the bottom, again, you just put pushing it all and needle felting it, poking it all in there. And there's areas that I can see that I need more black wool. That's okay. I'll fix that. But if you were working color on color, whether that be purple or green, whatever color or black, whatever color you want your witches to be, whatever color hat, because on this, basically all you're going to see is the hat. We're going to dress the bottom as I showed you uh, on the witches before. We're going to dress the bottom and so you're not going to see this piece, but you will see the hat piece. So if you wanted to use any leftover wool that you basically had that you didn't know, I sometimes, a lot of times I will do the base with some leftover pieces that I keep because I try not to throw anything out. If I And then I just um, use the barbecue skewer and wrap them around and, you know, inside layers. But if you're just starting out and you're buying it, then I would suggest you buying a core color of whatever top you want your hat to be. And then buying a top color that sort of matches. I was looking on her site. She has some beautiful purples. If you wanted to make purple hats and all different color tops that you can buy all different tones of purples. Beautiful. She has greens, every color in the book. Okay. So this is coming together more and more. I'm going to start working on the hat. There's a chunk here. 
now let's try to spread it out a little bit so it covers okay Okay, now this is working, see? See how this is working where I'm getting the hat to be skinnier and skinnier. I'm poking these in here and I'm twisting and pulling and now my hat is getting nice and skinny. On this one, which is the one I felted before, this is still all of the core wool. Um, you can tell maybe the difference in the fuzziness. This looks more fuzzy. But if it doesn't work, like this one, it was getting a little stubborn. When you put the top coat on, you can get a nice little point by just getting that sort of attached to your felting surface, twisting it and pulling slightly. You're not pulling hard, you're pulling slightly. And here I go. I have a nice long tip. Okay. I still see some brown coming through. So I continue to do this until there's no brown, until I can't see any brown. But then again, you're going to be using pretty much the same color. So you won't have as much of a different color peeking through. But I just wanted to show you how to attach a top to our little witch gnome. Now I'm looking at my timer. This has taken me about 45 minutes. I'm just trying to give you a time frame of how long it took. And this is pretty much done. I'm probably still going to fuss, fuss with it a little bit. I see some more spots that I have a little of the brown coming through. So I just take some more off of there, lay it down. This is about the easiest thing that I could figure to show a beginner how to needle felt. Again, every once in a while, stab the bottom a little bit more because that's the part. Move it over, see if it's standing, and it's standing. You need it to stand. You can press down a little bit. And again, with the top, you're also, by doing this, you're also getting the fibers to stick together. And you're getting a nice, long, thin tip to the hat. So basically that's it. That's the whole needle felting until we do the nose, which we're going to do after we do the dress. I'm going to pause the video, probably do a little bit more felting so that everything looks the way I'd like it to look. Make sure my base is nice and firm. And if you finish and you put the costume on and the hat and, and the wig and you're finding that your base is still flopping over there, you could still needle felt it. We're not sewing anything to the bottom of this. So you still have access to the bottom to felt it so it gets a little firmer. This is pretty firm. But this really can wiggle, 
this not so much. And that's what you're looking for. Okay, I'm going to pause the, pause the video and then I'm going to come back with how to sew a little outfit on your witch. But I'm going to clear off all of these supplies because I don't need my felting pad anymore. So I'll be back in just a bit. Okay, so now we're going to sew the witch's dress on our needle felted carrot. Now the first thing I want to show you is I have made three different ones. Uh, this was the one that I did that was brown originally I put the top coat on. This was one that I had had already made. I showed it to you in the video. It was a little longer so I decided that I wanted to make the costume on this one so I just added some top coat to it like I showed you on the brown one. And this is the one that I made at first with just the core wool. I know I said yarn a lot in the other video. It's wool, yarn, wool, but it is wool. This one I haven't put in the top coat on yet, so I will probably do that later. And I'll make two more witches. So I'm going to use this one, this longer one. But I want to show you with the witches that the picture is up on the video, some of the things that I use for them because you can use a lot of scraps to get this done. You don't have to go out and buy fabric. Um, this was Edna. Here's Edna. She's the first one I made. And this fabric was just some leftover scraps I had from another project that I did. This is just a piece of leather that I had in brown. I mean, I'm sorry, in black. And this is felt, but we're going to do the hat and the hair a little bit later. So this is all they use. They use the scrap fabric on her. On, I believe, oh, I, this one's Mary. On Mary, this fabric happens to be a sleeve from a blouse that I had that I no longer could fit into. Um, so I love the fabric, love the print of the fabric. So I just cut off a sleeve and... The bottom is not hemmed, as you can see. There's no hem on the bottom. And I just used a gathering stitch around the, the part of the sleeve that was going up here, gathered it, and sewed it on. This trim, this lace right here, is just bias tape. And this is just some appliques that I cut apart. And I just thought it looked nice on her dress. And I also took some of the same bias tape and just wrapped it around her hat to make that a little bit different. This one, and I haven't named her yet. I mean, they're all hanging out here. Hold on. There you go. This one is a sock. I had bought a socks for another project and I had one sock left over. So I said, what am I going to do with this? This is the inside of the sock. And this is the outside of the sock. So I just made a little dress on the inside. And as you can see, this is one of the times where I put the seam in the front because I thought it gave it a more of a homespun look. And she has her proud little button. She loves her little button. Leather, uh, leather belt. Again, just a strip of leather. And then I had some of this fake wheat that I just cut off. Put a few here up in her hat. Um, this one was the last one I made, and I had this fluffy, this is more purplish, or then it's appearing, it's looking a little bit more periwinkle. Again, I just cut it in little strips, and this was even such fine, thin fabric uh, that I was able to needle felt it in the doll itself using the needle. This is some ribbon, again, some more appliques, and this, I believe, her name is Ingrid, my daughter named her. And this one, hold on, I've got them all lined up. They're all watching me. This one is Mrs. Hewlett. And I had, I have some cotton velvet. That's this beautiful orange color. This is lace that I cut off a blouse, either mine or my daughter's. 
and this happens to be yarn hair, but I'll do all of the hair in a separate section. So that's what I used to cover the witches that you saw at the beginning picture of the video. So a lot of people ask me, how do I dress my mice? How do I sew the outfits? I hand sew. I don't know how to use a sewing machine, so I try to keep this as simple as humanly possible. For my mice, I was gotten, I was given the tip of using a paper napkin, which I would put on the mice and try to draw outlines. I'll show that some other time in some other video, but right now for the witches, or for this particular witch, I'm going to use some of this very pretty leftover fabric I had from another project that I used it on. This is all spider webs, and I think it has a Halloween type feel. So how, how do I determine or how do I start cutting the fabric? Well, again, these are very easy, easy things to do. And we try to make it easy because you want to get this done probably about an hour, an hour and a half. I line up my fabric. Now this edge right here, I don't know if you can see it. It sort of looks a little whiter in the screen. Is the selvage or the end of the fabric? So I'm going to use that on the bottom. Now the reason uh, why is I don't usually like to hem my bottom seams because unless I'm putting some kind of lace over it, you're going to see the stitches. And you cannot make stitches as small enough, or at least I can, to hand sewing it, small enough so it doesn't show that it is a hem and when you're making dolls that sort of looks fake and you want to keep it as as an outfit that looks like the 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 thing that you created would be wearing it so I also if you see this edge I use pinking shears a lot they're a little stiff I really should oil them up but I use pinking shears a lot because it helps the fabric from fraying. There are some other tips to help it from fraying, but for this project, we don't have to worry about that. So I take my fabric, I line it up. Now I'm going to gather it on the other edge. And let's see, this is pretty good to make some folds and pleats. So I'll use the full width of the fabric that I have left. Then what I do is I try to determine how much of a hat do I want this switch to have? And I'm thinking right about here is pretty good. Right there. So I'll take my I'll take my scissors because I don't care if this frays, because it's going to be, you're not going to see it. And there will be some glue there. Also, I should mention I use a lot of fabric tack, and that helps a lot with these tiny little outfits that you're making because a lot of times, like I said before, you cannot make a sewn seam. It just looks fake. All right. So I decided that that's about a good area for where I want it. And I'm just going to try, put this aside, try to cut this as straight as humanly possible. Now, when you have scissors that, in case you don't know, you're using for fabric, you should only use them for fabric. This scissor that I'm using, although it's a little smaller than I usually like, is the one that I only use for fabrics and or wool. I don't cut paper with it. I don't cut anything else with these scissors. I just try to really just use them for fabric only. Now, I'll put this to the side. Okay, so you can see I'm not really using a lot of fabric here. So you can use scraps that you might have uh, or a blouse that you might be throwing out that you like the fabric and you can use it. And again, I'm using, this has got a black background. If you have different colors, purples, oranges, whatever color that you like for your creation, you can use. Now I line it up. Inside to inside, I realized, oh, not bad. I didn't cut it too bad. 
I do like to straighten it out a little bit. But first, what I'm going to do, because I'm making a seam right over here, is I'm going to take some straight pins and just pin it together. This is a cotton fabric, so it's pretty easy to work with. When you're using velvet, it gets very slippery. And sometimes pinning it, it, it gets very wonky. Okay, now I like to have, I like to use my pinking shears and I will try to cut straight again. I like to use my pinking shears because this is going to, I am not, I'm sorry, this is going to be a seam on the inside and I think it looks nicer if the edges will cut with pinking shears. Okay. Now, and it also evens them up. Again, this is a little off here. No worries. This is not a costume designer. It's for your little gnome witch. Okay. Just so it evens up there. Alrighty, and then I put all my scraps on the floor. Well, and a little garbage can on the floor. Okay, now this is the bottom again. As you can tell, I'm using the selvage or the end, and it's a little frayed, and that's okay. I like that look. I'm not trying to go again for anything that fancy. That's a cute look. I take my needle. Now I have doll needles, which are very long needles that can go right through your doll from one side to another and this helps in certain things that we're going to do but right now I'm just going to use a regular needle and make what I call my straight stitch straight stitch seam I try to always double up my thread if I can sometimes you can only use a single thread but I try to double it up because I find it's easier to use. I don't have to worry because half of the time I pull the needle out of the thread if it's not doubled up. Okay, make some knots. My mom used to be able to make a knot with one finger. I don't do that. I always make my knots like this and have fun. Let me take my glasses off because I don't need them. All right, try to get the knot in the same spot and I'll go a third time. Okay, that's good. Then I clip the thread off right by the knot. Thread over here, my doll needles over there. Now, I'm just trying to go straight across. Am I, am I am hoping that I am, let's see, yeah, that's about, that's good. I'm just trying to go straight across. And if you find that difficult to do, take your ruler and with the pencil, oh, everybody's fallen. Let's all hang out. Let, you know what? Go back there. Okay. They're all coming over to look and they're falling. You can just try to draw a pencil line on your fabric just so that'll help you make a straight seam. That way you're just trying to sew on that line. Okay, get my needle, get the knot at the end. Okay, just want to check to make sure this is not too long. Perfect. Perfect. Again, I can always cut this. Perfect. That's where I wanted her hat to be. Okay. So here's how I do my straight stitch. I take my needle when I start and I go down. Pull it through. Get the knot so that all the thread is evenly pulled. Go over a little bit, 
pull the needle back up. Okay. Can everybody see what I'm doing? Let me see. Can I zoom in? No, it's not going to let me zoom in. I hope that you can see what I'm doing. Otherwise, we're going to have to start again. I go back to where I put my first stitch in. Go back down. And then I go back down in that, in that area. And then I just move over a little bit. The same size stitch that I want. Pull it through. Go back down where the last stitch was here. And move down a little bit more. Trying to keep my stitches as even as possible. I hope that you can see this, guys. Having a little problem with my focus. Let me see if I can get this to focus a little bit better. Pull it down a little bit more. Would you be able to see that? And I don't know why it's not letting me focus it a little bit better than that. You know what? I'm going to stop and start. I stopped the video there because I was trying to get it to focus in more on what I'm doing, but I don't know if I got it at any better focus than what I had. So I'm just going to continue trying to get this done. And when you do it yourself, you can pretty much see. I'm going down where the last stitch was and moving the needle over, trying to keep my stitches as even as possible. And this is what I call doing my straight stitch. Take the pins out once you get by it. What's happening here with my thread? Okay. So I'm just going to work down here because I can work a little faster. I was trying to manually um, adjust the focus and honestly I am a little technically challenged. I'm sure one of many other people know how to focus their cameras a little bit better. Um, but you just continuing to stitch you made your line when you go down and you put your needle up, you try to go up on the line. And you try to keep them connected where you really don't see any spaces between them. If you go down in these where the stitch came up before, there won't be any spaces in between them. But if there is, that's okay. This is a handmade object and with handmade creations, you have the human touch to it. You're not a machine. So this doesn't take really very long to do. And this might be called a running stitch. I don't know. Running stitch, straight stitch. Again, I don't know the, ter the terminology or the verbiage they use for them. That's just what I call my straight stitch because to see the other side it almost looks like a machine stitch I hope you can see that um, basically I use like two or three stitches different types of stitching to get all of my mice costumes done I also use fabric tack a lot, very judiciously, if I can say that word properly, but I um, use that because, again, when you're working so tiny and if you're not using a machine, it's hard to get your stitches very tiny. 
And sometimes with those tiny things, your material will start to fray. And I find that fabric tack really alleviates a lot of those problems. Also, I'm running out of thread here. I'll thread the needle back up again. Let me just remove this pin. Also, um, such a thing that, well, you could buy it, but you could easily make it. If you take some PVA glue, they call it a uh, fray check. But if you take a little PVA glue and mix it with water so it's very runny, and take your take a paintbrush and just brush, brush it lightly, this glue and water mixture that you made, that would stop a lot of fraying of your fabric. Now, of course, I ran out of thread. Happens all the time. So I'm just going to make a knot here. And how I do that is I go, well, I didn't leave enough to even do that. So let's go this way. My, and just make a knot. Okay. My mom used to be a seamstress. Excuse me. Oh, okay, we're sneezing on videos too. Okay. Uh, my mom used to be a beautiful seamstress and she used to be able to sew all sorts of things on a sewing machine. She used to make my clothes when I was younger. But I never got to learn how to use a machine. So I knotted it three times. I always like doing it three times. Got some more thread. I'm not going to need a lot for the rest of that seam that I have there. That'll do it, I hope. Everybody pretty much knows how to thread a needle. I like using a little bit bigger needles that may be proper because again I'm not a seamstress. I like using bigger needles because my fingers are a little clumsy with that really fine fine needles and trying to thread um, the thread through the needle hole can sometimes be a little bit daunting but this is fine. Made three knots clip off the end. Now Again, when you start with this stitch, you go from the top down, and I go back a little bit over the stitch that I've already done just to make sure that it's secure. Pull it through, come over a little bit, and then go back to where your stitch went down and go over and continue that way. So this didn't really take a long time, even with all the stopping, focusing, and re-threading the needle. And I'm working, it could have worked either way, but I happen to be working towards my bottom. Now as you go, if you see that some of the thread didn't come through all the way, just pull it through individually. You might have to pick one, you know, see if one thread or if the other thread works. And we're almost done. A couple more stitches and this part will be done. This happens to be very nice fabric. This is um, cotton, like I said before. Very easy to work with. And I guess I could have just did this off camera, but I just wanted you to see what I was doing, especially that if you run into not having thread anymore, you just thread it. It's not, it's not an issue. Okay, that I want some of the thread doesn't look straight through. Okay, 
So I have enough thread to do how I usually do a knot at the end. I go down my last stitch. I don't pull it all the way through. I come back up and I go through it. So it sort of go through my little loop sort of makes a knot right there. And I do it again because I like having secure knots. I could even do it this way. I'm going down. I don't go, I don't pull the loop through all the way before I put the needle through it. And you make a knot like that, pull it and cut it. Now, as I said, my mom was a seamstress, and any time that she made a seam, she opened it up, and she pressed it. Now, I'm not going to do that, but I will sort of what we call finger press it, just to get it flattened out. I could, but then you have to get the iron out. And you're just trying to make sure the iron only goes over here because you don't want to create any creases on the sides. If you have a little mini doll iron, they do sell them. That would help during this. But again, this is an easy beginner project. We're just finger pressing it, and that's all we do. So now we turn it inside out. And we have like a little sleeve. We put this through. Okay, that's good. That's a good length for where I want to make my hat. It's a little loose, and that's okay because it'll just make some nice little pleats on the top, on the top and on the bodice. Now, get some more thread get some more thread out again I'm going to double it and this you want to make sure that you're a little bit longer so you don't have to redo it because you really can't redo it on this but you, you're probably not going to need as much thread as you think you will and this I call just like a gathering stitch and I'm using my doll needle for it you if you have just a regular long needle because this really isn't that thick I would use a really long needle but I happen to have a doll needle so it helps again just make a knot Okay, and I make three because I do not want this to unravel. And I don't cut this off yet. This is going to help make the end after I make the knot. I don't know. I cut the uh, this extra thread here. Okay, I, does everything look does everything look unfocused? Sorry guys, I'm just trying to get it to focus a little bit better. It was focused fine for the needle felting, but now it's having a little bit of a problem. Okay, I just leave the tail. Just leaving the tail. The knot's over there. And I'm just leaving the tail. I take the top, which here's the bottom, taking the top, and I go to my back seam. I open them up because I don't want to sew them together. I want them flat. Okay. And this is what I call my gathering stitch. All right. Put the needle in. And all I'm doing, I'm not going back. And I would say I'm about, let's see, let me measure it. I'm about a quarter of an inch from the top. I can go a little bit higher than that. Let me go like maybe an eighth. And just put the fabric, try to get it as even as you can, but you're not, you're not going up and down with the needle. You're just sort of gathering the fabric. 
It's almost like how you would gather curtains. Pull it through. You don't even have to pull it all the way through. Again, it's fraying a little bit over on the top, but that's going to be okay because all of our hair is going to go in the hat brim, so you're not going to see that. And also because between the dress and the hat brim, I'm going to be gluing on the hair. So there will be glue there too, so it will not continue fraying. In this gathering stitch, you go around. And I'm all the way at the end. Back to where I started. Pull that side out a little bit. Get this through. And as you can see, it gathers up the fabric. Okay. Take my little witch body. Put it through. Now, if there was one part that I wanted to be in the front, I'd make sure, since this was my back seam, that I had it in the back. But it doesn't really matter to me. Okay, put that through. Now, here's where, again, if you had another hand, it would be very helpful. But you're making a knot. You're taking the both ends of the thread, and you're just making a knot. And you're trying to keep that as tight as you possibly can. Okay? I just did it twice. I didn't go three times. And I probably will do the third time. But I just wanted to see how my pleats were looking. I'm trying to even out my pleats all around the body. Make sure I got my back pleat. Where is that? Right here. Just try to even out the pleats around the whole body so that one part isn't more pleated than the other. Then make sure that the bottom of the fabric goes to the bottom of your felted carrot. Pull out all the threads that are going around. That looks like it could be a little bit more pleated. Then what I do, now I haven't cut anything or any, I haven't cut anything off yet. I make my third knot. I'm pretty happy with the pleats. Okay. Holding this part of the thread down. And I'm going right through to the other side. Right through to the other side. Right through the felting part. Then what this does is it sort of locks the fabric and the pleats in the area that you want them to without having to sew all around. I put the needle back down through the front, not through the same hole, and sort of try to get my needle, aim my needle for the side. The other side, pull it through. Now this isn't that thick, so that's why I think you don't have to use a doll needle. You might be able to use if you have a regular long needle, but the doll needles help because they are thicker and longer. Again, going from that side, going over, trying to get straight through to the other side. And if it's not coming out where I want, I just pull the needle out a little bit and try to adjust it. Okay, so so far I went from the back to the front. From the front to the side, and from that side straight across to the other side. And now I'm going to go right to the back. Again, I'm pulling it a little bit, and now I'm knotting it again. And that note, that not only attaches your fabric to your felted piece, but it also sort of keeps the pleats in the same spot. Okay, I knotted it three times, and then I cut that off. And now we have 
a little dress. Now if the if it starts fraying, just cut it off. It'll just cut off all the frays. You're gonna neaten this up. And if this starts getting a little too furry, we can needle felt it again just to tighten up, just to get the the wool into the core wool a little bit better. Or again, you can just do this. And that helps hold it together a little bit more too. Okay, so now she has a dress. Also, let's see, not all. Also, in my bag of goodies, this happens to be a glove. It's a Halloween glove. And I used the other one on um, another piece that I was using, another piece I made. But I decided that I thought it would be cute if this was an overlay dress. So what I'm going to do, now this already has a seam on it and the back hem rather and a seam. So I'm just going to lay this over here on my needle felted witch and cut it off across because I am going to put this layer of a dress on her. Okay. And I'm going to use the same gathering stitch on the lace as I used on the top of the dress. Okay, let's check. Is that pretty good? Is that straight? I don't know. No, it's not so straight. We get there. It's a little haphazard sometimes, but I get there sooner or later. Not as straight as I wanted because I was just cutting fast across, so you just straighten it out a little bit. Okay, so I have to thread my needle again because I don't have enough thread on here. Again, I'm going to use the longer doll needle because I'm going to put it through my doll like I did the other one. So, and these needles are very easy to thread because they have nice big holes. Pull it through, get the bow, pull it through, get to the other end. Way to go. Here we are. I guess if I was doing this on a white background, it might be easier for you to see. But basically, all I'm doing is putting three knots at the end. Now, I'm sure if you watch the videos, you're going to see that people can do this a lot easier than I'm doing it. But I guess I get it done. Put this to the side so I could use it again. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Did we go through already? What's happening here? Oh, it went through already. Anything that can happen on a video is going to happen, guys. Or ladies or gents, whoever's watching. Hopefully this will come through. Yes, it did. Okay, good. So I find where they've made their seam. This looks... She looks like it's falling apart a little bit. Trim it up a little bit more. Okay. Hopefully I didn't cut my thread. And I did. Did I? No. Good. Okay. Here we go. Now because this is lace, don't pull the knot through because it'll go right through. And if you have a longer needle like this, it's not a problem because you can hold a lot of the fabric on your needle. This is how I attach lace to different things because I want it gathered. It's folding on me. I don't know why, but we'll figure that out too. Okay, there we go. 
just going in and out. Just want to be able to gather some of the fabric so you can make pleats on it. Now I did pull it through the needle, but I'm not pulling it. I pu pulled the thread through the fabric, but I'm not pulling it all the way down to the knot. Again, I'm just going in and out to make a gathering stitch and I'm back where I was. Okay, now making sure the back doesn't go through, I don't want the back to go through, I'm going to open it up. I'm going to go from the top down because it's going to be a little easier. And I'm putting her little extra skirt on. Okay. If it's a little shorter or longer than the other one, that's fine. Pull it up a little bit. Okay. Am I in the back? Where did that back seam go? Here's the back. All right. Get my two threads. Okay. We want to make sure that we're seaming it in the same spot as the other seam. We're tying it up in the same spot as the other one. Flip it around. I'm sorry. I know this doesn't look as professional as it should, but we're okay. Again, try to make knots. Okay, let's get lower because it looks like it was raising up there. You just sort of have to fix it a little. Again, it's going up too much, so I want to go down a little bit with this because I want this to be on the bottom also. And you put another knot in. Wait a minute, now am I in the back? Okay, I'm a little bit off the back seam, so I'm going to move it over. Because I want my two seams to be in the same spot. So I'm going to move it over a little. Do it again. That was only one knot. Trying to keep that as stiff as uh as tight as possible, pull the other one through. Okay. Now she's on. The lace is on. Third knot, pull it through. Okay. Now, again, let's look. We got to pull it down a little. We still can because there is a little looseness in this. We didn't sew it through yet. And we want to make sure before we do sewing it to the body, we just sewed it around the body that the lace will go to the bottom. Okay, it's to the bottom as much as it can be. Come on, sometimes fabric gets caught with the fabric, so you just pull on it, you'll get it to go the right way that you want. Let me see. Okay, all right, good. So I take my thread that has the sewing needle and I go through to the front because I'm tacking the lace onto the body. We'll go, you know, not through the same hole, but then go to the side, go through. Not again, go through to the other side. Okay, and then out through the back. Okay, and I knot it again. My needle is getting a little too long to do that, so I'm just going to cut it off. That was one knot, two, and three. 
and then we take the scissor, go down and cut it. And now we have an outfit. You have a little cute little outfit for your gnome witch. Now, you, like I showed you before, you can do this with all sorts of different fabrics. It's very easy, very fast. You're not using anything but a straight stitch and what I call my gathering stitch so that you can have like little pleats all around. Okay, I'm going to clear off the sewing and next we're going to put some hair on her. And I'll show you some different techniques that you can use to put some hair on. Well, I was thinking about how I was setting this up and I usually put the nose on after the whole doll is finished, but I thought that would be a little hard for you if you're a beginner. So I'm going to do the nose first and then I'm going to do the hair and then the hat. But there are some other things that I just wanted to tell you. Earlier when I was mentioning all the different things that you could use, whether you uh, bought the Zuli tool, a dowel, or a skewer, you could also use a knitting needle if that's what you have. Just wrap the wool around the needle. You might have to needle felt it because the knitting needle will be a little bit more slippery since it's metal than a skewer. But you can use that to get it working if that's all you have. Also, what I did when I was off screen was the hem of the lace was a little higher in the back and I didn't want to take it off here and have to uh, redo this whole thing. So I just took the hem off. So now it's a little bit longer, but my little soon to be gnome witch does stand. And if I want to cut this off later, I will, but I'm just going to leave it alone right now. So let me show you how to do a nose. Oh, the other thing I did want to tell you is if you go on Serafina's uh, store, and I keep calling it top coats, it might just be the color, or it might be called a pelt. Um, every wool that she has, if you click it, it gives a description of what you can use it for. The core wool, core wool is labeled as core wool. That's the wool that we use to make the body before we put the top coat on. But you can use, if it just says uh, black or oregano or bay color, you can get those wools and they would be great top coats for it. Now this happens to be a tawny, tawny pelt. T-A-W-N-Y. And this to me is close enough to or Caucasian flesh color, so that's what I'm going to use. If you want your witch's nose to be green, then you buy one of the green wools. Personally, I don't, there's only one green, green witch that I know of, and she's in the movies, so I prefer to make my witch's noses more of a flesh tone than a green tone. Okay, so I flipped my stab at Wabbit over because this is my light color side. Sometimes I push the rice around to get a more even surface here. And I'm just going to take, got a little felt on me, okay, a little wool. Just going to take a little piece. Just pull off a little piece. Maybe another little piece. Now, depending on how big the nose you want, and that's usually why I put my noses on at the end, um, will determine how you do it. So I'm going to show you two different ways to do it. One of the ways is to wrap it around a toothpick, which is the same thing as your wooden skewer, only smaller. So we're using the same wrapping technique that we used earlier for the witch's body and you just start wrapping it. Try to keep everything separate. And you're not going very far, pretty much staying in one area. You're not going down the toothpick that much. 
and you wrap it, get those fibers together, and they'll pretty much stay. Pull it off the toothpick. Now you're going to be using your 40 size needle, your very thin needle. And basically you're just trying to get the tip and needle felted in plus needle felting the whole thing. You're, round, you're taking it off the surface and just turning it around so you're getting all sides. And you're leaving one side unfelted, just leaving a little bit at the back so that'll help you attach it to your body, to the body. Now, I like to curve my noses down a little bit, and I also like them thinner at the tip. So what you're trying to do is you curve it. Now this is going to be the underside of my nose. And by needle felting it like down in, this is how I'm trying to stab it without getting my fingers. You start to make your nose get a little bit crooked and down like a hook. I'm just trying to make the tip a little bit smaller because I want it to get narrow at the end. You can always maneuver the, the yarn, uh, a yarn, the wool. It is wool, it's not yarn. I know I kept saying yarn before. I don't know why. I know it's wool. Okay, so right now, it's a little bit of a curve, okay? We're not gonna do nostrils right now. We'll do that after we put the nose on. Another way, if you wanna do, let's put that little nosy over there. If you wanna make a little bit of a bigger nose than that, like that's on Edna over here, and she has a little wart with some hair coming out. Take bunch of wool, maybe a little bit more. If there's something in the wool, you just pull it out. And I just make it a ball, roll it around in my hands. This is where your inner sculptor should come out. And then I just start needle felting it. Turning it around. Keep twisting it as I'm felting. Now the 40, and this is a 40 spiral or twist, is your finishing needle. I guess you could use a 38 on this also if you want. I'm just using it because I have it in my hand. But as you can see, all I'm doing is rolling it around till I get a rounded or bullet-like type shape. And then I'm looking at it and I'm gonna determine that I want this side to be the underside of the nose. So now I know how to felt it a little bit better. So. I'm taking the underside, I'm pointing it that way, and I am going on the other side, the top of the nose, and felting it down. Go a little bit more on the underside because it's all pushing out. Flip it over. Now the, now the underside of the nose is facing me. And again, trying to flatten it out a little bit. Now here's the top side of my nose, and I wanna get the tip of the nose a little bit more narrow. So, I'm 
I'm felting it not directly as much straight down but more like on the side watching my other fingers also so I don't stab myself pull it off it got a little fuzzy because I was doing it a little too much before I pulled it off but you can get those fibers in there and if they don't go in that easily you can cut them off okay so here's another nose this is the bottom that's the bottom that's the side view and you use this fuzz again I didn't felt that because it'll make it easier to attach it to your person so now I think I'm going to use the smaller nose this will be for somebody else I'm going to use the smaller nose and I also while I was off camera let me see if I can find my scissors sorry I trimmed I trimmed off a little of the lace and the fabric I want to go opposite directly opposite of my back seam it's right here and I'm just going to take my nose I'm going to place it right there let me see if I can get this right there this little, and it's right where the edge of where my fabric is to my felting hat a little bit above that I'm going to take my 40 needle and just start taking that little fuzz that I left and needle felting it right into the hat okay so now it's already attached but I want to make sure it's there a little bit more so I take the nose I lift it up now this is the underside and I'm felting the underside and the sides just straight in to the hat part portion of your gnome and there you have a nose now you can go this way to get it a little bit not as long keeping that's always pinching the tip that pretty much does it for my nose very easy to do now with this size it's so small and you're really not going to see it but if you wanted to add nostrils take a little itsy bitsy piece of yarn this is too much cut it in the center hold on my scissors cut it in the center layer it one on top of the other so it's really tiny piece and you can even take half of that roll it up again see if you can get it to roll a little bit just to roll it with your fingers take it and put it right on there that side it seems like it'll be too a little too much but we'll see you can always take it out and then as you're poking it in you're poking it into the back of the hat and you're also poking it in to the side and that's some big nostril but if I continue to poke down that'll get it a little bit smaller I know and I want it up a little bit oops don't don't needle felt the fabric and I also want to make like a little hole for the nostril coming at it from the side okay and where's my other little piece
just just rolling it in between my fingers so it gets a little smaller. Come over here and do the same thing. Just trying to get it a little bit smaller. Try to make the match. Look at it from the top. One of the things, whether you're sculpting with wool or polymer clay, you have to look at it from all angles. Does it look good from the top, the sides? You could use a little bit more felting over here. Now nobody's going to see the top of this nose because the hat's going to go right on top just like that. But I do want to have some nostrils. So, okay, I see a little fabric sticking up there. I'm going to cut that off, get rid of that. And I will take the 38 size needle and just go right over here because I right between where your nostril meets your nose because I want to make the holes for your nose. So you just sort of put your needle in. Don't take it out that much. Whoops, watch your little fingers. And by needle felting in the same spot, you'll have some nostrils. I don't know if you can see that. Okay, the nose goes down. So now, basically we're done with all of the needle felting for this. Um, you could, if you're seeing that your hat is looking a little furry where there's lots of fibers on the end, I would take my 40 needle, my thin needle, my finishing needle, and just go over it. Trying to get those fibers felted onto the core wall. Now, if you want to, just could use a little bit more. Sorry, guys. Sorry, ladies and gents. Hold on. If you want to curl your hat, you can do this by taking your felt and creasing it. Now, here's where those leather finger protectors come in handy, but we're going to try to do this without hurting myself. And just felt on all sides, and it gets a little bit of a crookedness to your hat. And because the way you put the top onto your base, you just did it straight across, if you remember, it will sort of bubble because it, not every strand and every inch of it is attached to the core. So it will give you a little bumpiness, which I think is sort of cute. Okay. Now, I'm going to stop doing any more felting to the hat. I might want to uh, felt later when it's all done. Um, there's a lot of finishing touches that I do at the end. So this is good just to show you that you can start making the hat go this way and that way. You could make it go in a circle. There's all sorts of things that you could do with this. And the tip might not stay as together as you like. So just felt it in any part that you have a little bit of meat to the wool to try to get it to stay. You're using your fine needle and that should work. Okay. Also you can wet your fingers. I have some water over here because I am going to show you how to do the hair different ways to do the hair. Okay, 
So we're going to put this on the side. I uh, take all of my felting equipment and put that on the side because I want to show you how to do hair. Oh, the other nose. I might use that for the other witches. Okay. Different different items you can use to make hair. On Mrs. Hewitt, all I did was I took this very pretty curly type yarn and I snipped it off just so that I had a nice firm piece and before the hat went on I went around show it to you on this one and I just glued it down with a little of my fabric tack so I just would put some glue down fabric tack press this down into it and that held it and I just went all the way around cutting pieces off I didn't care about the length because I was able to handle the length after it was all on and then you can trim it to whatever size you want I thought that was a cute way to use up not so I don't have a lot of this yarn left so I figured it was a nice way to use up some yarn that I had now for Ingrid over here, I used, it's not really embroidery floss, but that's where I would purchase it. It's sort of a thin string, but it has like a twist to it. Again, what I did, the same thing as the yarn, I would take maybe <clears throat> two, two pieces of it, go crease it, glue it, cut it, you know, keep going around like that, cutting it on the bottom. And then when I had it all on her, that's when I started trimming it so that we would get pretty much the same length. And if it's not the same length, that's okay too, because you're making witches here. Okay, so that's how we did Ingrid's hair. Now Edna, who was my first one, she has these beautiful Tibetan, this beautiful Tibetan lamb. And I buy Tibetan lamb from a place called One of a Kind Artist Emporium. I'll give you the link down below. And it comes on the pelt. And what you do with this is you grab a piece, you cut it, grab a nice thin piece, have it, cut it, and then you use your fabric tack and I will show you cut it get it nice and thin cut it straight take your fabric tack and run a little bit of bead a bead of glue right on the top Put your hand in some water so the fabric tack does not stick to your fingers. And for lack of a better term, smush it down because what you're trying to do is to get the fabric tack to go to all of the different fibers. Then you take that and you leave it on the side to dry. Okay, just to show you another one. You take, hold on, sorry guys, you take your lock that you want to cut. Go like that. Hold it so it doesn't go anywhere. Get your fabric tack. Now this got a little sloppy. I want it very much uniform, like a straight line. Now this is a technique that people use when they're applying hair to their polymer clay dolls. This is one way to do it. Forgot to wet my fingers. Okay, wet my finger. 
You don't want any blobs. And you just sort of try to smush it again to get it so that the glue gets all of the fibers. But I'm not going to use this for this little witch. I want to show you some other things. Hold on. This is uh, just gray wool that I had. And I used the same technique of putting pulling fiber, which I will show you here with the black. Pulling some fiber out. Okay, cut one end so that everything is in a straight line. Get your fabric tack, run a bead of glue all on the tips. Wet your fingers and smush. And you have to make quite a few of these to go around the head. I'm not sure if I want her to have black hair. I might want her to have gray hair because I think there's too much black hair and there won't be that much distinction. So I'm going to figure that out and decide what color hair I'd like to make for her. And when I get back, I'll show you how I did that. Okay, so I decided to go with some gray hair because I thought it would give more of a contrast to all of this black. And I made one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten of these little tufts. The fabric tack has dried quite a bit. So, I mean, it's still tacky, but that's okay. Now, once again, just to show you how I did this, is you take some felt. Ah, uh, yes, no, some wool. We'll get it together. Pull it out. Cut so that you have all of the fiber here in a straight line. Get your fabric tack. Put a bead on top, trying to corral all of your fiber. Wet your fingers. And try to, I guess, I don't know, sculpt smush to get all of those fibers in there so the glue is holding on to it. And then just put it on the side for it to dry. Okay, but I think I have enough here that I've already done. Oh, you're also going to need a paper towel because if the fabric tack starts getting a little gonky on the top, you want to be able to clean that off. Okay, so you take your little witch, get some more fabric tack out, and just press them down here. Now the brim of the hat is going to cover all of this, so don't worry. And just press, this was the one I, no, the one I just made is over there. Press it down. Take another one. Press it down. Take another one that you made. And press it down. Sometimes if you watch your fingers, it's a little bit easier to work with this. So you don't stick to the fabric tack. 
Now that first piece, I went very close to her nose. I might even put another one over there, but let's see what we have going on first, how many I have. Get your fabric tack. Okay, put it another. Spread it around. I'm also getting it on the top of the fabric and right by the nose. And start putting in more pieces. Don't worry about the lengths, we'll take care of that later. And now she has all her hair done very quickly, very easily. All glued in, it's not going anywhere. Get your fingers a little damp again so you don't stick to the fabric tack. And here she is without a brim. Now what I might do is I might take this one that I've already made, I had made one, gently open it, separate it, and just put it over her nose like that. I like how that looks. Take the fabric tack, go like this. Wet my fingers because this might get a little messy and push it down. If there's hairs that aren't separating, just cut them. Okay. So now my little needle felted gnome, which has hair. Okay, now this side happens to be a little longer than this side. That's okay. You can just cut it. Cut it down. I think she's looking pretty good. So now the only thing left that we have to do is the brim of her hat and decorating it any which way you want to decorate it. So I'm going to pause the video again because I want to get set up with how I do the brim and I'll be right back. Okay, now we're up to the brim. So we are in the home stretch. Our little witch is almost done. Right here I have a piece of felt that I bought in the arts and crafts store. It's not the real stiff one and it's not the real floppy one either. It came in a big sheet and of course I'm using black because that's the color of my hat. If you want to use a different color if you're going to use the purple or green, you might want to go and get your felt first so that when you buy your wool, you can try to match it or not. It's, it's totally up to you. So you find something that's round because it's much easier for me anyway to make a circle on the felt using a jar. I happen to be using my Stamperia Gesso. Place it on the felt. I have just a white colored pencil. This is Crayola. And I trace around so that I make a circle so it's easier for me to cut out. Take my fabric scissors. And just cut the circle out. Now I'm going outside the line that I made. This pencil mark will rub off. Okay. 
just go around the circle. Piece is a little big, but we'll manage it. Just want to make sure I'm in screen so everybody can see what I'm doing. out of the way. I have my circle. Basically, if there's any spots that don't look right to you. Again, I should be taking off my glasses so I can see what I'm doing. Okay, I have my little circle folded in half. Fold it in half again. Take your scissors. Just make a little nip so you know where the center of your felt is. You can see the little hole. Fold it again in half. You don't want to go too far to the front or the back. And you can arrange, you can cut this. You don't have to cut this all at one time, but you're taking out a little rounded sliver. This is what I took out so far of my felt. Now I know it's probably going to need to be a little bit more rounder on each one of those sides. So I'll go back and do just a little bit more. Just trying to get it. Now of course this doesn't look that neat, so try to neaten it up a little bit. Okay, you get your little witch. Put the brim down, and there you have your little brim. You can maneuver it any which way you want. Now this this to this, I cut it a little too much. So I'm just going to put that on the side. Or I could recut the felt if, you, if I want. But now what I'm going to do, is just lift that up a little bit, is get some more fabric tack. And place some more fabric tack right around the top of the hair. And if I go on the hair a little bit, that's fine. I'm just trying to get it around because I want to glue my little felted brim on. And there you go. She's got her little hat. Now, I know that there's a little bit more of a slice over here so I can see the hair through it. But we're going to take care of that right now by getting back some of our original fabric and cutting a half brim. I'm just trying to see what side of the fabric I want to take it from. And I'll use this side that I've used my pinking shears on. And I'll just cut a strip of fabric off doesn't have to be that straight I do want it nice and long so I'm going to go to the end of my fabric over here because I like to tie a knot in it and then I can always trim it down once I put it on the witch around the hat trying to cut it straight guys ladies and gents but we'll see there we go we got the strip off I'm not going to worry that one side I used my pinking shears and the other side I didn't it's fine 
I'll even put the pinking shear side down. If it really bothers me, I'll cut it off in a bit. Yeah, let's cut it off. It's going to bother me. So I just go down. It also makes the strip a little bit narrower. And that'll probably look better. Now when you're at this point, you could start to think of different things that you could use to make some decorations in this hat brim ribbon that I'm putting on there. There we go. Now as you can tell, it's not really that straight, but that's okay. No one's going to check that out. Wrap it around the top. I always seem to put it on, well when you're looking at the doll on the left side, her right side, just take it and tie it. Push it down to where the rim is, where the felt, the purchase felt meets your hat. If you want to make a bow, you can try to make a bow. But I'm not going to make a bow with this. I'm just going to double knot it and see how that looks. Okay. I like that. But I think I want it a little shorter. So I'll cut it. So it's just a little bit shorter. I'm cutting it at an angle. Okay, making sure the knot stays. Now what I might do is I still have some of the lace, my lace glove. Might take a piece of this also. Cut off a piece of this. Cut where the seam is. Take the seam out. Now I can wrap this around here or I could just wrap it around my fingers, get a little fabric tack and put it over there. Sorry, over here and add that in. So I'm going to look at my little witch. I might want to put a belt on her, which would just be a, a piece of leather, or it could be a piece of seam binding. I might make a polymer clay spider to add to her brim. I might put some feathers on. I really don't know how I want to decorate this right now. I usually like to sit and look at them for a while and just think of different things. I might trim this lace so it doesn't come under. It's fine like it is, but I might just cut it a little bit so it's even with the bottom. But I'm going to look at this little witch and I'm going to try to figure out what other decorations, maybe curl her hat a little bit more, that I would like to do to give her a little bit more character. And I'll come back with the finished project project. Okay, see you in a bit. I did some finishing touches off screen. I gave her a belt and how I did that, I wanted to make her have a little bit of a figure. So I squeezed in over here because what's underneath is just your needle felted carrot. And I tied her belt. I used the same seam binding tape that I had used on another witch. This is a little bit stronger than the lace that I was using, the spiderweb looking lace. So I used this instead because I wanted to keep it in. Then once that was done, I cut the seam, I cut the hem of the lace just so it matched the bottom because I thought that would look better. I took the hat trim and I use Mod Podge Stiffy 
You could also use the PVA mixed with some water. Took a little paintbrush and I painted just the edges of the fabric and that'll stop it from fraying. And then I just took a piece of lace, the spiderweb lace, cut it and glued it in. I also made this little spider, because the dress is spiderwebs, I made this little spider to hang from her hat. And this was very easy to make. It was four pieces of thread that I kept tying in knots. And then I took my needle and I put it through with some white thread on it to the back, made one little tiny knot, and then went through the hat and made a little tiny knot there. I then took my Sharpie Magic Marker and colored where the knots, where the white knots were on the body and on the top so you wouldn't see it. And so now she has a little spider friend hanging. I the only other thing that I did was I put a little hairspray on her hair and I just trimmed it around to make it look nice. One of the things that I did mention about the fabric was that I use a lot of different things, whether that be a sock or an old blouse, and I cut lace from blouses. But you could also go to thrift stores and try to pick up blouses from there. Sometimes you can get very good deals. There's lots of places that you can get fabric from, and you don't need a lot to accomplish any of this. All of the fabrics that I used were bits and pieces of things that I had left over from other projects. So look around you to try to see different things that you can use. Now, the last thing I usually do with my witches, I, it's, I give them a little bit of a red nose and I use Pan Pastel Artist Pastels. They're ultra soft. They're very rich. I get these at the one of a kind Artist Emporium shop. She has a shop online and I'll give you the link below. And by the way, if you don't know how to access links below, is when you're on your computer, it will show um, there's a little thing on the bottom right, right after my name and the description of the video, it says show more. But if you're on your cell phone, just tap or click on the description of the video and that should bring all of the links up, just in case you don't know how to do that. So these pan pastels are very rich. So I take my little brush, this is a makeup brush, put some on here and sometimes I even put it on my hand you can see how rich it is because I just want to gently give her tip of her nose a little red just think it adds a little character to the tip of her nose and now all that's really left is for me to find a name One of a Kind Artist Emporium is a lovely shop. If you go there and you look around, you could get some Zaworski crystals. She has um, pages filled of wings that she makes, butterfly wings, bat wings, that you can do all sorts of things with them. But like I said, I'll link that shop also, besides the shop where I get all my wool and needle felting supplies down below. I hope you enjoyed needle felting your little gnome witch. She looks like me. Well, I decided that if you leave, if you watch this video and you leave a nice comment down below and hopefully you thumbs up and subscribe to my channel that on October 1st, and this is the year of 2019, I will take all of the names of the people who leave nice comments, put it in my witch's hat and have one of my children pick out a name and I will be sending this witch to that person. A little giveaway to say thanks and to start off the holiday Halloween season. So until I see you again, have fun creating beauty.